All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Keep your views coming at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. We're talking about all issues and hearing the youth voice in matters politics. That's why we're calling it Youth and Politics. Now we're talking about corruption in the parties and also in, during the elections. What role should young people play to ensure they weed out anyone whose image has been tainted? Wilkista, yes. where, where should we begin with this? Okay, so um, the problem begins with the amount of money we spend during elections, as he had rightfully put it. And there's something that uh, members of parliament shelved called the Campaign Finance Act. And they decided totally we're not going to look at this document and we don't want to use it because it was capping the spending of uh, each elective position at a certain amount of money. And for me, what that was going to do, it was going to reduce uh, the amount of corruption because truly corruption happens because there are people who feel like they need to recover their money when they are back in office. So they recover their money through uh, some cronies, uh, a bank manager somewhere, um, and a company manager somewhere. So tendering that is, uh, you know, doesn't exactly follow due process and they make it look like it's following due process. So corruption begins from the amount of money we spend during elections. So when we figure out the amount <coughs> of money yeah. we spend during elections and cap it to a certain amount, then it lessens the urge to get into office and feel like you need to recover the spoils that you spent during elections. And by the way, it's so... It's so surprising where the money comes from yeah. during elections because, as you said, people pour money. You know, 20 million, like it means nothing. If right now you tell a young person 20 million, they cannot fathom uh, what 20 million means. In fact, <laughs> uh, you're talking to someone who's probably daily wages at 100 bob per day. So that in a month is maybe, I don't know, uh, 3,000 shillings. So telling this person 20 million, while in their minds they cannot even see 1 million shillings, is already a disconnect in terms of how they are removed from that conversation. The other thing is, even as someone who has, <coughs> has worked with the young people uh, for over five years now, and uh, recognizing that young people are not homogeneous, again. Young people are very, they are very different in their groupings. Yeah. And I think um, Nathaniel and I here were at a forum yesterday on meaningful youth participation in political processes. And the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties gave an interesting st statistic that of the 83 political <coughs> parties that are registered, 17 million Kenyans are registered under these political parties as members. And of the 17 million, 9 million of them are young people. And when you go uh, juxtapose that with the registration at the IBC, which says they only met 25% of the set uh, targets for themselves, then you ask yourself, what is the role of political parties particularly in pushing their members to register as voters and especially the young people? Because we are talking about the young people having a say and making a decision at the ballot. Yeah. So how are political parties holding themselves accountable to the targets that are set by the Independent and Electoral Boundaries Commission on achieving the targets of registering <coughs> uh, voters? Yeah. And <clears throat> It goes to speak about probably some missing link somewhere. There's mischief because if 17 million people are really registered as member of political parties, truly, truthfully, you took your ID card and said, I am a member of party A, I am a member, or a member of party B, a member of party C, I do not think that they, they will say that we are not <coughs> going to vote. Yeah. Because those are passionate people who are championing, quote unquote, party ideology. So where are they? And political parties also need to tell us where they get their members from because it looks like now uh, there's some conspiracy that we don't understand in terms of the numbers uh, at, the poli at the register of political parties. Yeah. And <clears throat> this is now where young people come in. Once they register as voters, and it's, it's been very hard for us to get young people to understand the importance of registering as voters and making sure that they actually vote uh, for their leaders because yeah. there's, there's apathy right now in this space and young people don't believe that their voice actually counts yeah. because the talk is of <coughs> we have deep state and deep state says who goes where. Okay. So what does a young person uh, have to say about the president, uh, the next president of Kenya? Okay. They believe they do not have the voice or rather the vote to say that in our large numbers, in our 70 plus percent in the country right now, 
now we are going to vote in the president. They do not have that belief. Yeah. And we need to restore the belief in young people that they actually have the voice so that we can have young people going to queue and cast their vote at the ballot and not because someone gave them fare of 100 shillings or 200 shillings yeah. but because they actually want to change the trajectory of this country. Yeah. And Ketora, that is actually where my main question is because I find this as an oxymoron for some reason. Where do you draw the line as young people? Some leaders tell you take the money but vote for the right person. What does that even mean? Because if you've already taken the money, it means you're corrupt in one way or another and you're influenced to vote in a particular way. Then they tell you to vote for the right person. How do you decide who the right person is? Is it the person who gave me the money or what, what do you base it on? Yeah, I um, can take an example of the by-election in Kebra. You see, there are people uh, who believe that uh, they cannot be elected without money. So they have to come down with that money. And some of them, they have been in government, and their key achievement has been stealing. You had the president the other day uh, when he visited Limuru. He was in public saying, telling uh, citizens that even in this election, there are corrupt people who are running for big offices. And you should be aware, and you should know, and you should avoid them. You heard what Mother Karua said. So, because we don't want just to, uh, to run away from the from the truth the bitter truth is that uh, as a country we have been be, be bedeviled by corruption a corruption that has really skyrocketed and uh, this corruption has killed most of our prostitutes most of our institutions and therefore uh, what now need going forward you know election give us a chance to set an agenda and, cre and, and, and create a more progressive country so we have now an, a chance uh, when we are being guided by the president. He is leaving a legacy, and he has done good things that he has done so far. Uh, actually, it, has, it, is, it, is, it, is, it has started happening when the handshake came in. So what we need <coughs> now is to take this opportunity as citizens, as people, as patriots, as lovers of this country, to ensure that we get the right leadership. The leadership that is going to overhaul yeah. all the institutions and ensure that we take we cannot we may not be able to finish corruption completely, but we should make it we should minim take it to the minimal level so that at least our economy gets a chance to thrive. Because corruption has really uh, stifled the economy. Yeah. And you know it it gives it makes you wonder. You, just you know the people say politicians are the most corrupt uh, because those are the people who come out and talk to the public so the public will have a chance to uh, to audit their lives but what politicians do mostly is to contone that corruption you know you have a voice <coughs> to say this is corruption and you have to, a voice to tell kenyans we should not condone corruption and you should tell kenyans and you should be uh, come out and condemn corruption at the highest uh, terms. You saw people who, get, who got into office when they are just uh, uh, at uh, their lowest level in terms of wealth. And within a short time, they own malls. They own uh, uh, big companies. And so you wonder, with their salary, does it commensurate with what they have and, and the time they, 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 they have been in public service? So what we are telling um, young people, because we say now uh, politics is expensive, you can't do politics without money. True, that is where um, the situation has taken us. But still, you should not shy off from identifying the right leader. Let those who with money, let them bring that sacks of money because they have taken time they thought they can buy your brain. They thought they can buy your heart. But be wise enough. We have been told, especially at the national level, our leaders who are contesting for national positions. Because you see, when you take, when a party or a coalition wins an election, they form government. And that government now will have a manifesto. And that manifesto, when it's implemented, for example, us as ODM and, 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 and Jubilee, 
we are saying we have to kill yeah. corruption. So if Kenyans give us a chance of which they have already given us, we are just waiting uh, for, for the main election. I'm telling you, uh, Trevor, this country will change. Okay. The no. lives of young people <coughs> yeah. will change. Okay. The course of this country will change. Okay. Because we are not going to entertain anything closer to corruption. All right. I want to hear your fresh ideas in terms of dealing with corruption and seeing away from party politics. So what is the best way of dealing with this as young people? Should it get to a point where young people say, if we receive a single coin from, say, Nathaniel and is vying, he's the one we make sure we vote out? First of all, I want to thank Etora for admitting that they betrayed the people indeed, and they joined Jubilee. You've heard him say uh, Jubilee and ODM are now uh, in government. Uh, and that is the mistake when you do, when you, are, you have a political enemy, don't interrupt your enemy when he is making mistakes. Uh, that is the mistake ODM did uh, with that. So that's why they are, they are being considered as part of the mistakes that is happening in the Jubilee administration, because we are seeing a lot of pilferage of public resources, wastage in government, and this is where we start, uh, Trevor. Allow me to say, first of all, I have a lot of admiration for Mwishmua Mother Karua. She's one solid woman uh, who should be given a chance. And by the way, uh, we're going to challenge our party leader to consider having talks with Mother Karua. And possibly this is one of the persons we should consider for running mate uh, within our party. So the, when she talks about fighting corruption, I know she means it, because her credentials are very strong. Uh, and we have a lot of us admiration for her. Uh, and by the way, Trevor, uh, when we were negotiating the Grand Coalition government, uh, Musada was the chief negotiator of uh, uh, ODM, and Mother Karua was on the other side. And the people who put together the dream that came to be the Grand Coalition government that uh, brought out the 2010 <coughs> constitution. So these are the things that we should uh, say about some of these leaders uh, who have contributed immensely uh, to the development of this country. Uh, on the issue of fighting corruption, it starts with budgeting, because corruption is budgeted in Kenya, and we what we call development corruption. So under our policy, it is first to stop corruption at the budgeting level, uh, and to stop development corruption, where you budget for a road, but you factor in uh, money for corruption, uh, maybe what we call now the 10% of the kickbacks. So this is the root of corruption. So and it starts with good governance. If you read our policy platform as Uchumibora, we are talking about good governance and good ideals. This is what we are putting forward, that we must elect a government that champions for good governance. What is good governance? Good governance is somebody you should be able to feel the government represents your aspirations better. For instance, uh, the, we are, administrations are stealing the future of young people. Uh, when you see, for example, Trevor, uh, and, and uh, Will Kista alluded to this, uh, when an aspirant is coming uh, to ask for a vote, there is a culture that has, gone, uh, that has been entrenched into the hearts of our people that you cannot vote for a politician until uh, you get a handout from that politician. Uh, and, and this is the question of the electoral system. We must be able to have a national conversation. How should we change uh, the electoral system we have in Kenya so that we put more emphasis on strengthening political parties? For instance, if you look at election, uh, electoral systems, uh, such as the proportional representation that lays emphasis on parties being elected on the ballot. Those uh, countries that have that system, they are very strong in terms of values and ideals. For instance, South Africa. In South Africa, they use proportional representation. It is the party that is elected, and then the party presents a closed list uh, to the electoral commission before the elections. So if the party wins a seat in area X or Y, then the first person on the list becomes a representative of that party. We need to have a national conversation how to change the electoral system. If we don't have this conversation, we will discuss the same issues throughout the electoral cycle in, in, year in, year out. So we must uh, take these discussions boldly. Uh, and I like that the discussion that we had at BBI uh, during that moment, even though it was short-lived, uh, where we can have national solutions. Uh, if we go with this pure presidential system, where it is the aspirant who is on the ballot, and the way we are seeing mismanagement of the economy, uh, many young people don't have jobs. Yeah. Uh, and Alenga uh, challenged me to talk about the issues we are uh, uh, pushing forward in the Uchumi Bora. One of them is to reduce borrowing. How do you grow an economy? You reduce borrowing. Look at the rate of borrowing right now in the government. Uh, within less than eight years, we have seen more than seven trillion in terms of borrowing that is officially uh, announced to the public. Uh, and as a party, we have come up with a bill 
uh, through Mweshimiwa Saka Bunyasi, uh, the MP for Nambale, known as the Public Debt Management Authority Bill. I don't know whether they have read this bill uh, that is trying to introduce an authority that before the government borrows, we must have a clear uh, a time frame in terms of how we are going to repay, whether the economy is going to support the, 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 the debt, so that the government does not have a free hand in borrowing. So once you reduce the appetite of government from borrowing, then you're able to free resources in terms of putting into other sectors of the economy. We are going to revamp agriculture, and I talked about this. We are going to reduce taxes. Uh, we have said this, uh, that taxation uh, is what is killing Kenyans. You cannot overburden the already overburdened taxpayers. We have to reduce taxes in the Uchumibora plan and then create more taxpayers. Once you have more taxpayers, uh, Trevor, you're going to see a surge in the economy. You cannot uh, say the other day, I saw the taxman saying that they are going to look at the social media profile. Uh, if you are posting something on Instagram, you're driving a Mercedes Benz, for instance, then they will come and audit your lifestyle and then start uh, questioning the source of money. You cannot put an hammer on the already of abandoned Kenyans. Okay. So that's why we are saying in our Chumibora plan, we need to reduce taxes. And, and Trevor, uh, allow me to say this. Um, if we have to stabilize this country, we yeah. have to start with governance. We cannot have a scenario whereby you see political amoebas, uh, and a political amoeba is the one who takes the shape of a container. They will yeah. change parties more than five times. For instance, we have seen politicians changing parties severally. Uh, for instance, the deputy president has changed parties five times in less than 10 years. He was in ODM uh, in 2013, UDM temporarily, URP uh, in 2013, Jubilee Party in 2016, and now UDA. This is a classic example of a political amoeba. And the political amoebas in the political systems are the ones that are ruining for the, the party for good governance. When we talk about uh, supporting young people, the creative industries, the energy, the talent, the innovation of the young people as the solution to ending unemployment in this country. We mean it because if you are able to tap into the creativity of young people uh, and be able to give them the opportunity uh, to serve themselves, unlike giving them 6,000 or wheelbarrows, if you give young people the means to serve themselves, yeah. instead of giving them fish, then you are gi giving a better promise. And this is what is contained in the Uchomibola Manifesto. Okay. So when you hear us talking about the future is luminous, indeed luminous green is ends. <laughs> okay. <coughs> We're about to wind up on this conversation, but let me bring back a lemma on this and uh, talk about the issue. Is this a failure of institutions or a failure of the people? And this is general, right from corruption all the way to the way we elect our leaders and then complain about them. Is it a failure of institutions? Are they the ones failing us, or is it the people failing themselves? Because now, before you come up with a solution, first you have to admit there's a problem. Where is the problem? I, I think the question to Nathaniel was very clear, that uh, what are the, some of the things we're going to do to, read, uh, to, to bring f uh, an end to corruption. But he decided to take us in so many circles. Um, uh, Nathaniel, when you are confronted with a question and then you start now attacking other parties, it's called learned helplessness. And uh, you know that is really the philosophy that defines ANC. You're all shattered in a corner where you feel you are helpless and you just complain and whine and can't offer a solution. But let's go. Uh, the, the benefit of this discussion is that uh, Aduma and I uh, are not coming here with the burden of a party. So we can be able to <laughs> at least tell Kenyans what we think can be done. Number one, if we're supposed to end corruption in this country, we need to make sure that um, our agencies are working. Like uh, we collect revenue through the Kenya Revenue Authority. Is there accountability for this taxation from the point it enters in from the, uh, to the point it is dispensed? We have devolved units. We sent money to counties. Do we have accountability for these monies? Because we are just churning out monies, but we do not, have, we do not track back uh, an accountability platform that can be able to inform us. Is this money making sense? Is this money doing what was supposed to be done? Do we ever even uh, sit down to do development audits for our <coughs> county governments to make sure that our county governments are using that um, allocation to bring, each, uh, to bring uh, every other county at um, an equal playing ground. And that's what that I was mentioning earlier on, Alenga, because you see, we do have those institutions. We have the Auditor General, we have counties, have the CIDP, County yes. Integrated Development Plan. Yes. 
the question is, do they stick to them? We have those agencies, but they are not working. And that is where the back stops. And that is why uh, earlier on I was saying, when we look at corruption, we first of all look at the politicians. And when we look at the politicians, we miss the point. Because the guys who are perpetuating corruption, the guys who are, who are sleeping on jobs are very innocent citizens we appointed down here. They are heading agencies. Those agencies are not accountable to anyone. The moment you try to, to question them, uh, a certain king, tribal kingpin will say, this is our person, you are targeting him, and then the conversation disappears there. So today, somebody will be arrested for um, corruption in such and such an agency. How that case will end, you will never know. But you will see drama on TV. The man was arrested. He was dragged, put into a vehicle. It was driven off with sirens, and then after two weeks, the issue goes like that. Our system does not punish uh, <coughs> vices like corruption. Instead, it punishes virtues like honesty. If you are coming on, the, uh, on a platform of election uh, with an honesty and an and integrity uh, gown, then you're not the, the right person for, for, for that job. Then, so, so then uh, when it comes to this um, issue of corruption. How do we sieve our politicians to ensure that we are bringing in the right people? So we have to start from their ideologies. We have to start from what they have shown us that they can be able to do. Yeah. I remember very well, if, I can, if, we, if we can draw a, a, a tea table of all these, um, all these politicians who want to be president, then we start asking ourselves one after the other. Is it, this person is giving us this, this conversation. Like, for instance, we are being told by ANC that they will stop, they will reduce borrowing. Yeah. Where Kenya has reached right now, where we are economically, it is, it is not true to tell us that you will stop or you will reduce borrowing. Where this country, the economy of this country is being held by debt, <coughs> that's a fact. So if a leader like Msali, who wants to be president, runs away from that fact, instead of confronting it and telling us, yes, we are a debt-dependent uh, country, but we are going to ensure prudence in the management of what we borrow. Like, if we, if we borrow from another country, where are we directing this money? Can we borrow to direct it to industry? So that this industry can be able to pay back for itself. But we are borrowing to to redirect into current, uh, 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 recurrent expenditure. We are borrowing to build fantastic uh, infrastructure that might not be able to bring it back to itself. And then what are the kind of partnerships we are engaging in? Like let's say the expressway. The expressway was built on a premise of build, maintain, and handover. That the Chinese, the, the, the people who build that uh, expressway are going to manage it for about 30 years then they will now hand it to the government. So where is value for money? So those are the fundamental questions we need to be asking. Not throwing just uh, things to excite the masses. We're going to stop borrowing. When you stop borrowing and <coughs> our country has come to a level where it is debt uh, dependent, yeah. then what is the alternative? If you tell people you're going to cut taxation to increase people who are coming into the tax bracket, what does that mean? How applicable is that? Because if you say, well, um, VAT is going to be reduced from, uh, let's say, 14% to 7%, how does that ensure that there are many people coming into, in, into the, the tax bracket? Tell me you're going to expand the business space. Tell me you're going to make it easier for me to apply for a, to register a company. Tell me you're going to make it easier for me to achieve the licenses that I need. Tell me you're going to reduce the, the levies that uh, a product comes with and, and then it informs its final value on the market. Tell me those, those technicalities. Yeah. Don't just throw to me you're going to reduce, uh, you're going to wake up in the morning and issue an executive order. I have, re I have reduced the, 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 the uh, taxation. Then tomorrow the economy will boom. Those are lies that okay. should be debunked on national right. TV. Me, and then, yeah. uh, finally, if, uh, if, we, if you look at, uh, let's say, the leaders that are, are bringing themselves forth on the, on the discussion table, and I think we must be very honest with this conversation. Let us discuss uh, UDA versus ODM. We don't want to discuss people that are going to push for a runoff. While everybody else is going to become president, then they are going to push for a runoff. Let's discuss serious things. If you cross the, 
the, the philosophy of ODM and, uh, and, and UDA, who seem to be front runners for this, for this race? Then we ask ourselves from there, what is it that uh, Mushmiwa Ruto has done to end corruption in his tenure? In fact, he's an indirectee of corruption in, during his tenure in government. And then what has Raila Odinga done? He has been able to bring some people to book, even when it didn't favor him, even when it uh, backfired against him. So such a leader who is able to make a stand and not just tell us, like Nathaniel is telling us, um, Saliam Davadi has the appeal. Kenyans are not going to enter into a romantic relationship <clears throat> with Saliam Davadi. We want things done. Okay, I have to take your feedback and then give you each a chance, 30 minutes, 30 seconds each for closing remarks because we'll never seem to agree on some of these issues. Kevin Sadi says it's very simple. ESCC and companies should strictly do its work independently. Leaders from the president should have the goodwill to fight graft. Youth, which is a majority, should realize the future is theirs and it should be protected by stopping graft. Saji says, as long as money used by politicians in campaigns isn't monitored by any provision in law, we will forever have corrupt leaders in office because all the money they spend is recovered once they resume office. Ingenia Razaro says, don't allow a local thief from your neighborhood to steal your chicken and make you a nice soup out of it. This is what Martha Garua said earlier on. Good advice from the Iron Lady. Don't sanitize those who looted public coffers just because they are doing generous donations. Sagero Enoch says, the so-called youth leaders don't seem to understand the real youth issues. Many youth have papers, but no one is there to fight for them. Politics is all about interest. Corruption in Kenya is there to stay. Sir Rowling says, sometimes I wonder why we have a minimum age to get an ID card voter or a voter's card. Retirement age for civil servants, but not a retirement age for political offices and political appointees. The youth takeover is good, but will they deliver the change? Okay. Kulo Pascal says the quality of institutions, press freedom, and judiciary, cultural determinants, among others, are the causes of corruption. Ketora, closing remarks, 30 seconds. Yeah, thank you, Trevor. Uh, we did, we understand the issues that uh, young people are facing. Uh, maybe in the, in the next show, we will go down to that. Today we have the topic that we are discussing about the involvement of women and, and how to kill corruption. So we're just telling Kenyans, you're in the safe hands of no, 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 nobody else <coughs> but uh, Raila Odinga, uh, Babo Ataifa. We have started a journey. You know where he, has, where he has stood when Kenyans needed him to stand. And we want to tell even uh, those who are bitter, the Oka, people who are bitter, the NASA, those who are in NASA. We had paid all your debts and we did it out of gentlemanship. You never owed us anything. So please carry your bitterness away from us. We are a focused uh, a coalition ready to take government. Thank you. All right. Uh, Nathaniel, let me finish with the politicians yeah. first. 30 I, seconds. I think I want to refer Alenga to Jeremy Shabati, who is his friend, to elaborate most of these things uh, for him, because it seems he wasn't listening to what I was saying. But anyway, I came here uh, focused on the antelope. Now there's a black squirrel dashing by wanting to distract the policy position that I've articulated for the party. Uh, Trevor, uh, we are in support of good governance. And the example is when Musale was in government, the Goldenberg issue that he mentioned. In Goldenberg, Musale came in when it was already there from the previous regime. The Bosire Justice Botire, uh, retired report on the commission of, uh, commission of Inquiry into the Goldenberg report exonerated Musale Mdawadi from, uh, in fact, they praise him for having stopped Goldenberg. In the Parliamentary Accounts Committee report, you can read page 197 of that report. And this Commission of Inquiry happened when he was out of government in uh, 2000. Uh, that is how we are putting forward a leader who is not a clear, I mean, who is a clear demonstration uh, of good governance. Number two, I want to say that young people in this country, and if you look at the KNBS reports, more than 16 million Kenyans who are capable of working, they don't have a job or they don't have a means to serve themselves. These are the people that we are talking about. Okay. Because when we are drafting our promises, our campaign pledges, we must, promise, we must craft them in a way that we have the majority in mind. And our majority is the 16 million Kenyans, okay. together with the people who are envisaged uh, in the weekly or the monthly economic outlook reports uh, by KNBS. And finally, uh, Trevor, uh, we need to have uh, a national conversation on what is the national solution to most of the national challenges that are, we happen in this country. 
uh, all ranging from corruption to unemployment uh, to good governance, all this conversation, there must be a clear national conversation. Okay. And we must have a clear party uh, that is going to lead this change. Okay. Uh, what they are promising in terms of uh, the 6,000 social assistance will not work because that is a welfare state. The wheelbarrows they are promising from the bottom will only serve the, bo uh, it, the it few at second. the bottom, but the Uchumibora will serve everyone, okay. top, middle, and bottom. Done. Well, Kista, what do you want the young people to hear from you today, this morning? 30 seconds. Um, the young people want opportunities, and it's opportunities to make an income, opportunities to have decent jobs, opportunity to have jobs that are, uh, are commensurate with their skill set. And corruption fighting, or rather flushing out corruption is one of them, and this is my idea of how we do it. One, on the tendering processes, we have preference and reservation schemes yeah. under the Public Procurement Act. 30% to young people, women, and PWD. Yeah. The act clearly mandates an office to monitor and evaluate uh, the extent to which that is done. Can we see the reports of the extent to which that is done so that we know whether these groups are actually benefiting from those okay. two institutions? And I want to agree with Kevin Sadi and Sagero that institutions like the ESCC, yeah. uh, National Employment Authority, and um, you know, other, the ombudsman need to really uh, be empowered in a way that they are able to deal independently with issues on corruption and near particularly to step in for young people on employment. And lastly, everything rises and falls on leadership. Okay. So young people need to, first of all, make sure that they vote. And I will not tell young people don't take money from anyone. I will just tell young people to whether you take the money or not, please vote in the right person. There's a there's a there's a there's a, a saying that goes kura kwa nani, kula kwa nani. Can we do that as young people? Okay. And then present alternative leadership okay. at the ballot. We do not want to recycle old people who have been leading these corruption cartels. Okay. And finally the space of personal responsibility in flushing out corruption. If you don't take personal responsibility, there's no way we'll accept uh, millions of Kenyans to take the same. Okay. All right, Alenga, 30 seconds. Uh, Trevor, you cannot sail to new lands using old maps. It's a high time that young people will step forward, have trust and confidence in themselves, and then stop listening to young people who seek to advance or defend or call themselves Jeshi of so and so just to advance and then cycle a kingpin for no interest. If you look into these people and examine their history, most of them do not resonate with the <coughs> current struggles of young people. So vote a leader that resonates with your struggles. Yeah. If you entrust somebody who has had all the flashy opportunities in their lives to be able to change your destiny as a country, that is called ultra crepidarian. It will never bring a solution. Okay. So let's uh, understand this, that every generation must fight its wars. Okay. So when we come here, let's fight our wars as young people. Okay. The Honorable Raila fought theirs, uh, Salim Davadis fought theirs, Jirongos, and all those people. They come from a different generation, and our issues are uniquely different from theirs. Okay. So going forward, let's advance our conversation. Nobody is going to speak for us. Nobody is going to fight for us. Nobody is going to expand the space for us. It's it's now. All right. Alenga Torostad, political and governance commentator, John Mark Ketora, ODM Youth League president, and Nathaniel Mongare, head of ICT and programs at ANC, and Wilkista Duma, director, run for office. Thank you so much for making time this morning, and also for all the feedback that has come through. We're taking a quick break. When we come back, Willis Bazura Buru is back on the decks. I think it's with Roy T. Boy. We're leveling it up. It's Friday, people. Have a good one. Bye for now.